So it's very simple. Um, let me consider this class numbers and we are going to have uh, a public method. This public method, I'll call it as generate even numbers and. Uh, OK, we'll have a loop. Uh, I is equal to one. I less than equal to 100 I plus plus. So find all the even numbers between one and 100. So if I mod uh, two equals zero, we'll say that's an even number. And what we are going to do is we're not just going to print the even numbers. We'll move it to an array of even numbers. So let's say it's uh, an array of even numbers here. To int. Okay. Let me move this to this array. For this, uh, I'm going to have uh, the variable j to be equal to zero, and I push all these elements. All these elements, I'll be pushing it to this array, even of j is equal to i and j plus plus. Let's generate the even numbers. Move it to this array. Likewise, I will also generate odd numbers using another method. So let me show you how to perform that. So generate odd numbers will be my another method. We're going to give generate odd here. And instead of an even array, I will use an array of odd numbers here. So what is that? Just uh, have this uh, array of odd numbers and move everything to this array. Two arrays, one is for holding the even numbers generated, another one is for holding the odd numbers generated uh, between 1 and 100. And I'll have another public method uh, which is used for displaying these arrays. Display. Let's display all these arrays uh, for, uh, we'll have this uh, integer m from even and we will just this out. We will just display it. Okay. So just using an enhanced for loop here. Likewise, we will also display all the odd numbers for int k from odd. Let me display this out. Uh, okay. Okay. You can very well say uh, the even number from the array. And then close it. Display it like this just to have a message. And the odd numbers from the array. So we are displaying the even numbers and odd numbers from the array uh, using the display method. And we are generating odd numbers and moving it to the odd array. We're generating the even numbers and moving it to the even array. Now, what I'm going to perform is I'll create a thread for generating even numbers. I'll create a thread for generating odd numbers. I'll also create a thread for displaying the numbers from the array. Three different threads we'll have, and the fourth thread will be the main thread. So let me create an object for numbers first. So you call this uh, numbers t is equal to numbers. And uh, we'll create a thread thr1 equal to new thread and we'll pass this anonymous runnable target uh, and we'll override the run method as usual so what is that you're going to call here t dot uh, generate even so this will generate even numbers likewise uh, we can call this thread 2 is equal to new thread pass the runnable target and uh, override this run method, uh, you call this t dot generate odd. The thread for generating odd numbers, and finally we'll create a thread for the display method to thread thr3 is equal to new thread and new runnable. So here, uh, what we are going to do is uh, t dot display. 
three threads we have created and what I'm going to perform here is I will be performing thread one dot start. So that will generate even numbers thread two dot start that will generate odd numbers thread three dot start that will display all the I'm sorry. Thread three dot start. To display all the numbers from both these arrays. Now this thread will populate the numbers to the array of even numbers. This thread will populate it to the array of odd numbers. This thread should display from both the arrays and let's have one message in the main thread that is thanks for using our software. Now what I will do is I'll set some priority here. I will set the priority for thread one, thread one dot set priority to be a minimum priority of one. Likewise, thread two dot set priority. I'll set it as one, whereas thread three dot set priority, I will have it as 10 max priority. And main thread will have the normal priority of five, right? Now, if I run this, let's see what will be the output. So two arrays and then one display method to display those arrays. Yeah, this is what I wanted to create. You can very well see here. It says all the uh, numbers are zeros here in the array. Why is that so? Uh, why did this even happen? We should get some results, but we're getting everything to be zeros. That's because it's very simple. You know, we are trying to display before populating the elements. So what's happening is since I've given thread three to be of having a priority 10, this thread will execute maybe given preference and it executes first. What happens is when it's given preference, it will try to print the data from the array first. And uh, you see we have not even populated the data, so everything will be zeros. But what is that we actually want? The thread three should print the data that is populated by these two threads. So there are situations wherein a thread will be dependent on other threads to complete. That is what I want to stress here. So plain and simple, there will be situations wherein a thread may take up results just because uh, may take up results from other threads. So for thread three to start, thread one and thread two should complete. So before starting thread three, I will enforce thread one dot join. What is that I want to enforce here is when for thread three to start, thread one and thread two should end, should complete. So for this, we are using the join method that is thread one will die here. So we will terminate th this thread here. That is all the operations of this thread will complete when I use join at this statement. Understood when I mentioned this, all the operations of this thread will be completed here. Likewise, thread two, thread two dot join. So here, all the operations for thread two will complete. So this main thread, uh, from the main thread, we are also invoking thread one, thread two, thread three, right? Everything runs so simultaneously. When I do thread one dot join, thread one will die here or we can say all the operations of thread one will complete here. So it means thread one will populate all the even numbers to the array. Thread two will complete here. So it means thread two will populate all the odd numbers to the array. So these two threads will complete and only then thread three will start. And uh, we can also enforce thread three dot join here. So what it means is only after all the display statements are over in thread three, you will be executing this. So you will enforce this. So it is like thread three will complete here. We are using join method just to complete uh, the execution of the thread because another thread may be waiting for its uh, completion. That is the key. And when you run this now, you will not be able to see any zeros here. Because first the numbers will be populated and then the numbers will be printed. 
So you see now everything is in order. You don't see any zeros at all. Earlier we had one zero here and then all these zeros were uh, popping up. So now all the even numbers were uh, written and all the odd numbers were written. And finally, thanks for using our software is getting printed. The only thing you have to take away from this uh, demonstration is a thread can wait for other threads to complete because this thread is dependent on the results generated by these two threads. So when you want to complete the other threads and start the execution of another thread, you have to enforce join methods so that the threads finish and then the other threads start which are dependent on those threads.